Hi everyone, it's Diana the Doll Fairy here with another sparkling dose of doll magic. Today we're transforming Laguna Blue from Monster High into a sorrowful siren girl for another doll artist swap hosted by Retro Dolls US. In this swap, we each chose color palettes that we liked. My partner was Scooty Dolls from Instagram and one of the palettes she chose was this one, which is called Siren Song. When I saw this palette and the name, an image began to form in my mind of a siren or mermaid who, like Ariel in The Little Mermaid, makes a bargain in order to take human form. This mermaid turned human realizes that she wants to go back to the sea, but it's too late. She's already sacrificed everything and is now exiled to the world above the sea. So let's get out our magic wands and make it happen. The first thing I do is cut off all of her hair with thread scissors. Then I use hot water to carefully remove the head. And I use needle nose pliers to scrape out the remaining hair and glue from the inside of the scalp. I remove her factory face with some acetone nail polish remover, and she's all ready for her makeover. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I really like rerooting doll hair. However, for the first time, I'm going to try to make a wig. The main reason for this is that the hair I chose from Retro Dolls US's Etsy shop is an ombre synthetic fiber called Sea Witch Ombre that fits the color palette and the theme perfectly. But since it's ombre, folding the hair in half and inserting it into the plugs with a reroute tool will ruin the ombre effect. So first I make a wig cap by covering the doll's bald head with plastic wrap and then with some knit white fabric. I use an elastic band to keep the cap in place and then brush on a generous amount of Mod Podge in about three coats, letting it dry in between each time. When it's all dried, I can remove the cap, trim it to size, and it should fit perfectly onto the doll's head. I also create wefts of the ombre hair by placing the hair on a piece of plastic, like a piece of plastic from leftover doll packaging, and spreading more Mod Podge along the edges. I try to spread the hair out evenly so that the wefts will be consistent. I've also cut the ombre locks so that some of them go from purple to green and others from purple to black. This way I'll be able to make a wig that incorporates the effects of both parts of the gradient without the hair being ridiculously long. It's already going to go past her feet when she's standing, which is cool and works because she's a former mermaid. When the glue is dry, I peel off the wefts and trim them down to a manageable size. Then I get to gluing them onto the wig cap in layers. I drew guidelines onto the wig cap to make it easier to know where to place the wefts and at what angles. I use Aileen's Fast Grab Tacky Glue to glue the wefts onto the wig cap because it has great hold and adheres quickly enough that I won't have to worry about the wefts slipping out of place as I go along. As I place the wefts, I start by filling in the areas on the bottom with the darker wefts, which end in black. And at the top and at the part line, I use the wefts that end in seafoam green. I've watched a lot of wig making videos from Mosekito, Hextian, and lots of other doll artists, so I knew that to create the part I'd need to place the wefts facing the opposite direction and then flip them over. This proved to be a little harder than it looked in videos, but I managed, thanks to the expertise of all those videos that I've watched. And finally, the wig construction is complete. All it needs now is some combing and styling. So let's get to the face. After spraying her head with two coats of Mr. Super Clear outside with my respirator mask on, her face was ready for sketching with watercolor pencils. I wanted this girl to look really sweet and sorrowful. I drew this sketch to act as a guide. I gave her wide, innocent looking eyes and shaped her eyebrows so that she looked unmistakably distraught. I usually give my dolls a neutral or happy expression and have been rather hesitant to give my dolls very drastic brows or dramatic features more out of fear of failure than anything else. But I keep learning new things with each doll that I make, so this time I went all out with a longing, remorseful expression. You can see that I used both green and purple shades of soft pastels to create shadows and blushing on her face. Those of you who've been watching my videos will remember that I've struggled a bit in the past with creating shading and contouring with pastels. Now that I'm using Mr. Super Clear, I'm getting a lot better at this part of doing face-ups. I think the depth of color in this doll's face turned out really well.
I also added pinks to make her look more alive. I'm using a purple pencil to go over my initial eye outlines. I filled in the whites of her eyes with white pencils, but for the iris, I like to use acrylic paints. This way I can mix the exact shades I want and create a gradient by gradually lightening and darkening my base colors. This time, her irises are a simple purple gradient that matches the darker portions of her hair. I skip refining the pupil since I still want her to have a less realistic and more fantasy quality about her. I add highlights to her irises with some white acrylic paints. I want her eyes to look rather soft and have a lot of highlights because that will help give the impression that they are a bit teary or watery. Next, I draw on her dainty purple eyelashes with care not to go overboard. I want to maintain a fairly simple look here. I'm trying out drawing some of the eyelashes to point downward. I'm not sure if this is really true or not, but I feel like that gives her eyes a slightly more droopy look that adds to the emotion I'm trying to convey in her face. I keep her lips fairly simple as well, mostly using shades of purple pastels, and give her a slightly open-mouthed frowning look, like she's absent-mindedly gazing out over the ocean she desperately misses. After a final spray with MSC, her face is complete. Now all that's left is her outfit. I brushed a couple of layers of Mod Podge onto this light blue fabric to create a shell bra in the exact shape to fit on her upper body. I used the same method in my Pre-Marina custom doll video, which you can check out in the cards if you'd like. I'm aware that this sheer blue fabric is a little outside the color palette, which bothers me, <laughs> except that it reminds me of water, which I feel still works in the design. It's almost as if she's clothed only in water and bits of debris that came from the sea, such, such as scraps of fishnet and starfish. This netting fabric was almost perfect to use for the fishnet details, except that the purple color was too close to pink. So I brushed some of it with some purple paint to give it a darker and rougher look. I attached pieces of it to the top and mini skirt with glue. Then I also used glue to secure the clothing onto the doll. I was thinking of using this glittery gem on her skirt because it's really, really pretty, but I later decided it looked way too gaudy and bright to work in this outfit. I wanted the outfit to look more organic, like a representation of water and ocean debris itself. I did, however, use gems on each of the outer corners of her eyes to represent the salty ocean tears she sheds for the home she has lost. I also attached smaller rhinestones and pearls here and there along the outfit and on her body to represent how the sun catches on water droplets. My favorite part of this whole custom though, besides her ombre hair, which we'll get to, is probably these starfish accents. They're very tiny, delicate, and look so nice on the doll. I really love them. Last but not least, I made a circlet out of wire, pearl, and crystal beads, and tiny pointed shells. Not only was she a mermaid, but probably a mermaid princess too, because why not, right? <laughs> Are you ready to see her full look complete with hair? What do you think? Not too shabby for my first attempt at a wig, right? After her photo shoot, I carefully packed her away for Scooty dolls with extra care not to squish or break the delicate starfish. I'm also including some extra starfish accents just in case. And maybe she'll want to use them to decorate one of her customs sometime. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It's been a while since I got to work on my Kingdom Hearts series of dolls, so I'll be picking up on that soon as we get closer to summer. And I'm also hoping to get some Pokemon customs in sometime soon as well. Plus, I have a couple of exciting dolly surprises coming up in the near future, so subscribe if you want to see more doll magic. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.